Welcome back to Think Tech. It's Talking Tax with Tom. We're going to talk about yet another slush fund. Woo, they're everywhere. We'll be right back for that. Welcome to the show, Tom. I'm so interested to find that you found another slush fund. And we've been talking about slush funds and, you know, special funds and the like, and money tucked away in the corners of state government for a long time. And now another one. Um, what is it? How did it come to light? Um, and what's, what is good or bad about it? Well, we've been talking about rainy day funds for a while. This one is literally a rainy day fund. Uh, when Hurricane Iniki hit us in 1992, uh, a lot of the private insurers who were insuring houses and stuff said, well, we don't want to insure Hawaii anymore. They left the market. So uh, the the, the state decided to come up with uh, this agency called the Hawaii Hurricane Relief Fund, HHRF. And they put some money in it and they uh, allowed it to issue, uh, you know, base policies for uh, residential dwellings. And uh, so they did. And then, you know, about a, about a decade later, the um, private insurance market wasn't so jittery anymore. Uh, insurers came back into the market. So there really wasn't anything for the HHRF to do. So it closed its operations in uh, about 2002. But it still had a bunch of money. And uh, at that point, you know, something very interesting happened. I mean, the, uh, the statute that created the HHRF said, that if the um, if the hurricane relief fund dissolves, then the money is supposed to go back in the general fund. Did that happen? No, it did not. At that point, HHRF had over a hundred million dollars in it, and they let it sit there, and it still sits there to this day. Now. Um, it's had, it has kind of a storied history because uh, back in 2010 or so, you remember uh, we were just reeling uh, from the Great Recession of 2008. People were out of work. Um, there, there was uh, like a lack of money everywhere, and we started furlough Fridays. You remember that? Furlough Fridays uh, was basically a day when the state gave everybody an unpaid day off uh, once once a week, uh, and because they couldn't pay everybody uh, for for seven days and you know or five days in a week, and um, uh, but there was some concern about uh, kids in our public schools uh, because they weren't getting taught. And there was, you know, some concern that they'd be left behind and things like that. So um, some bright legislators had the idea to fund uh, these instructional days out of the balance that was in the Hurricane Relief Fund. Uh, but of course, it would be, be paid back. Now, uh, what they did was they... They, they they put a spinal tap into the GE tax, saying that you know for a couple of years, uh, the revenue from the GE tax would be used to pay back the Hawaii Hurricane Relief Fund to replenish it. So to this day, um, it's still there. It's got one hundred eighty six point seven million dollars in it. And it's just sitting there. And why do you ask? I mean, we already have a emergency and budget stabilization fund. Um, it's got several million, you know, several hundred million dollars in it. It got five hundred million dollars last year. It's getting five hundred million dollars this year. It's getting five hundred million dollars next year, according to the uh, you know the budget that was just passed. And so my question. 
uh, to the lawmakers out there is, yes, we need to squirrel some money away in case of emergencies, but uh, isn't it helpful for you to know how much we're squirreling away? Uh, it doesn't really help anybody to have all these monies uh, sitting around idle in, in in all of these places where you know people don't necessarily know about them. Uh, so you can pull the wool over people's eyes if you you know uh, if they ask what's the condition of the state and whether we have any uh, you know money sitting around. Well, the answer is yes. Wow. Oh. You know, and, and getting it out of there it requires a, an, an act of the legislature, too, doesn't it? Um, so it's not like it's available for the same purpose or even a related purpose uh, going forward. It'll sit there until uh, somebody squawks about it, like the press. Yeah, I, and I really wonder, I mean, you're covering this, and once in a while you write in Civil Beat um, about these special funds. Um, but is the, is the government responding to that? Is the government, um, you know, shutting down special funds? Uh, shouldn't this um, $180 million be put into the general fund um, instead of, you know, being squirreled away at, at infinitum? Um, well, well, yeah, I mean, that's what the legislature wrote when they enacted the, uh, the Hurricane Relief Fund program. Uh, they said when it shuts down, the monies go back to the general fund. Did they follow that? No. Hmm. And what about the spinal tap you talked about? What define how that worked or works? Um, there are uh, every so often earmarks that are enacted by the legislature off of the tax revenues that come in. Um, for a while, there was a spinal tap on the GE tax to fund education to the tune of ninety million dollars a year. That went away, you know, maybe a couple of decades ago. Uh, but there are still uh, earmarks on various taxes uh, to do, you know, different things. Uh, like the transient accommodations tax has uh, a bunch of uh, earmarks for land conservation and um, uh, tourism marketing and then to pay for Turtle Bay, among other things. Uh, the conveyance tax has earmarks. The barrel tax has earmarks. Uh, and this, you know, is is kind of disingenuous, really, because um, uh, when 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 you when you kind of divert taxes like that, uh, you, you really lose track of how much you're making. Well, yeah, who's in charge of that? Who's in charge of looking at these slush funds um, and figuring out, you know, yeah, how to take the money out, how to how to change the purpose, um, how, to, how to establish them or terminate them. Who's looking at that? Well, I mean, the, you, would, you would think that the legislature would have some, some way of looking at that uh, because they need to pass the statute that establishes the fund or terminates it. Um, the agency responsible at the state government under the executive branch is the Department of Budget and Finance. And we do know that the state auditor goes in and takes a look at uh, pots of money that each agency has every once in a while, every so many years, and, and writes a report because, you know, of course, the auditor has no, no power to uh, terminate funds because those are uh, established by law. Uh, so they have to report to the legislature, uh, which sometimes follows the recommendation and, and, and dissolves like unneeded pots of money, so they go into the general fund or wherever they're more 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 needed. Uh, but sometimes the, the legislature doesn't do anything about it. I don't understand this spinal tap thing um, because um, it, it doesn't make sense. It's not necessarily related. If you laid this down in front of some objective um, an, an analyst, uh, he would say or she would say, "What what's going on here? It doesn't make it doesn't make any sense at all." Um, you know, patchwork. It's a patchwork. Um, I mean, even without special funds, the idea of the spinal tax tap really troubles me. Um, why do we need to do that? You know, if we're taxing people, put it in the general fund. When you need the money, as you need the money with a budget, 
take it out of the general fund. Uh, why uh, assign it to a particular source of revenue? Uh, it sounds like, the, you know, very clever but lazy. Uh, somebody ought to straighten all this out. It should be simple for a citizen to understand. Uh, well, here's, here's the reality. Yeah. You, get, you get these guys co- come in for two years, right? And they do these clever things. The end of two years, you got a whole new bunch of legislators in there. They don't know. They forget. And so it goes on, you know, in the back room. Um, yeah. So, so what, what the legislators say um, is, or what, what, what the activists supporting these, these funds say, or the agencies supporting the funds say is, we need a dedicated source of revenue for this cause or that cause. What's a dedicated source of revenue? One where you don't have to go back to the legislature every year and beg for the money. That's what their definition of it is. Even though they may say, may say something else, that's, that's what they're really thinking. Um, well, for, I, I suggest to you we need, what we need is a, a consistent policy where you don't have to go back to the legislature and beg for the money. If a given you know, uh, expenditure is worthy, um, then the legislature should see that as a, a continuation of a consistent policy. Um, this is this is really um, you know a way to ensure the funding to a certain agency for a certain purpose, which may change over time, like the hurricane fund. Can I tell you a short story, Tom? Can I can take a little of your time and tell you a short story? Sure. In early part of the twentieth century in Maui, the merchants were very concerned with the bubonic plague. They thought that would be very destructive to business in Maui. And so they established, on a county level, they established the Maui Quarantine Fund. Actually, I don't even think it was government. It was just a bunch of merchants created a trust called the Maui Quarantine Fund. And they contributed to it. And they contributed, you know, maybe tens of thousands of dollars. But then bubonic plague went away. There was no bubonic plague. So the fund stayed there. Nobody did anything about it. And a hundred years later, okay, it had hundreds of thousands of dollars simply by, you know, appreciation and and interest. And so the question was, what do you do with this? The private fund, what do you do with this? Well, you remember the doctrine of see, pray, Tom? See, pray? Yes. It's it's an equitable remedy in, in the state courts, allowing you to modify the original purpose of a trust. Um, and you had to, you know, satisfy a judge who was a judge sitting by himself, uh, herself. Um, you had to, you had to uh, convince the judge that it was close enough um, so that the people who established the trust in the first place uh, would agree that this was a good change. So ultimately, yeah, and, and it's impossible to execute the current purpose of the trust. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. And so, you know, back in the, um, I guess it was in the 70s or the 80s, uh, um, a, a lawsuit was brought in equity uh, for CPRE of the Maui Quarantine Fund. And, and the idea was, well, it, it shouldn't just be bubonic plague, it should be public health. That's okay. And, and that was granted, and the fund then you know, became much more current and uh, addressed all public health. So it seems to me one of the elements, we're talking about a lot of issues here, but one of the elements is um, the ability to change the purpose of the fund. I mean, in a transparent way, so everybody knows what you're doing. Don't you agree? Well, sure. I mean, um, my, my question is, why is there so much resistance to dismantling machinery like uh, you know, a fund for bubonic plague uh, when the threat that it's supposed to address uh, is no longer present. Um, we have, you know, insurers back in the market that the, the fund shut down operations in 2002. Why didn't somebody wind it up? Um, they and the answer uh, is, be- and I think the answer is because there are, you know, people around who thought, eh, we got this money. Uh, we may as well, you know, save it for, we might use it someday. Yeah, I I think what you're saying is uh, let's leave this money where it is. It's like a quiet bank account. And when we really need it and where we figure it out, 
then we'll come back to the legislature and say, ah, we want to uh, do a tap on this money and we'll use it for something else. But that's not good fiscal policy, is it? No, one of the things that, that you got to have in fiscal policy is you got to know how much, uh, you know, you got to know where your money is. Uh, that's one reason why we rail against special funds so much, uh, that it's, you know, very easy to hide stuff. You know, uh, you have you have money in all these little pockets all over the place. How are you going to keep track of everything? Yeah. Especially well, when, when new pockets are created and, 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 uh, and closed daily, it seems. Are, is, is Hawaii alone in this, this kind of perverse way of treating uh, these pockets of money? Or is this all over the country? I don't think it's all over the country, uh, and I don't, but I don't think we're unique either. Um, I haven't really studied that um, extensively, but, but, I, but I am surprised by the extent to which we have you know, special funds of this, that, you know, this, that, or the other thing, uh, we have thousands of them. Uh, and and, and uh, we, we have criteria in our state law uh, that, that says, you know, here's when you establish a special fund and here's when it's not appropriate. And the auditor goes around and tries to enforce this, but, but every session there are, you know, bills and bills and bills. Um, you know, adding or deleting uh, more spinal taps on these taxes, establishing or deleting special funds. Uh, and on top of that, agencies can establish special funds administratively and sometimes do, whether, you know, whether or not the, the legislature wants it. So, so there are all these moving pieces that uh, not only the legislature, but the auditor has to, has to kind of scurrying around, scurry around and, and try to grab. Uh, so we even know how much money we have in the state. I mean, one of the um, uh, I, I remember when when Sylvia Sylvia Luke, you know, our our current lieutenant governor, when when she came in to be uh, House Finance Chair, one of one of her uh, you know um, initial projects that she imposed upon herself was trying to find out how much money the state had, and she found it was impossible. Um, well, you, okay, that's a subjective um, conclusion. I mean, it is possible. Um, I, I remember when um, Neil uh, Abercrombie uh, pronounced and announced that uh, he was going to bring in uh, uh, technology to identify, um, you know, all the things we want to know about state government and make that information accessible to the public. You know, I'll give a, for example, I don't know if you remember, during the time that uh, Earl Anzai was involved, I think he was attorney general at the time, the yes. question arose as to how many employees the state had, and nobody could answer it, not even close. Nobody knew how many employees the state had. With modern yeah. technology... And, and that's, that's I think, another, another uh, symptom of the same problem. Yeah. Because uh, employees can be special funded. You, you 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 have these pots of money uh, and and you can pay employees out of them okay um so if you have all all of these you know moving targets as to where the money's at uh you also have moving targets as to where the employees are because you know most employees are you know, that are that are on state payroll you you know about them because they're general funded uh some of them are not so if i make you governor just for this duration of this show, for example. Uh, I think you'd be a good governor, by the way, Tom. Um, what would you do to fix this? What kind of legislation would you introduce? What would it say? Well, I think for openers, I, I would want to go back to, uh, you know, the special fund uh, criteria and try to give them some real teeth. Um, that, you know, that that there are you know bad things that can happen to an agency if uh, they have a special fund that's unreported or um, or or, the, or it's being used inappropriately. Uh, I think there should be some consequences for that, and then uh, we got to start getting rid of the special funds we don't need. Well, how about the state auditor? I mean, it, it seems to me that um, you know if we 
gave the state order, auditor more resources, more people, and we gave him or her this assignment of finding out where they are and making recommendations about either modifying them, see prey, kind of legislative see prey, um, or um, terminating them and, and, and putting the money in the general fund where it belongs. Um, and and that, let's say that cost a couple hundred thousand dollars. If we achieved hundreds of millions for the general fund, if we took it out of those dark spaces, the dark places in the back end of the state government and put it in the general fund, we'd save the taxpayers a ton of money. We would, you know, realize enormous amounts of money, hundreds of millions at least. Um, so f- to spend a couple of hundred thousand and empower the state auditor to investigate all of this would be a very worthy expense, don't you think? Oh, he's, he's already done that. Uh- you know, during the pandemic, um, there was concern about, you know, catastrophic uh, the failure of the state budget because of, you know, tourism drying up and stuff like that. So uh, so the auditor took it upon himself to 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 look at all of the special funds in, you know, that are recorded in the uh, in the state FAMIS system, which is where, the, you know, all of the, the monies are supposed to be recorded. Uh, note, by the way, uh, that this doesn't mean that all of the special funds are there. It's just the ones that are recorded. So, so you know, somebody can do something about it. Um, there, there are, I'm sure, uh, funds that are out there that are not recorded because the agency just doesn't reward them. But he took a look at those, uh, those um, special funds that were there at the time, uh, and he did in fact conclude that there were millions of dollars available for the you know, to stabilize the budget if the legislature so chose. That, and of course, the legislature did not so choose. No, they didn't. They didn't. Didn't really have to because the federal aid came in, and uh, uh, so quickly the legislature was consumed with other matters, like you know, trying to trying to spend uh, the the money that was there <laughs> other- and that they did know about. <laughs> Really, we got to clean this up. You know, it's a it's a kind of um, collective corruption to let it go, not do anything about it year after year. Um, these these special funds probably draw interest of less than a percent. Um, and it's a tr- tremendous waste. And and then they come up with new taxes, taxes all over the, the lot that are, that are just piecemeal and uh, these piecemeal spinal taps. And, you know, it's really hard for any human being to understand what happens. The first thing we got to do is terminate the special funds and, and put all of that now and in the future in the general fund. And that, and that means a structural overhaul of the whole notion of special funds, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, we have to kind of get rid of the concept of so-called dedicated funding. Um. The way our government system is supposed to work is our executive branch spends our our tax money and accounts to it uh, accounts uh, accounts for it to the legislature, so the legislature can decide what to fund. I mean that's that's how our system of government works, um, and all of this uh, you know special funding uh, is you know by and large. Uh, a subversion of the process. Now, there are sometimes when you when you legitimately need a special fund, like you know when when the feds want to see it. Okay, like the the federal highway fund uh, does have requirements uh, that we have a state highway fund, for example. So yeah, I mean there there are legitimate uses for it, but if not, um, it really is obfuscating the budget and, and kind of blurring the the power lines between uh, accountability. Um, you know, to the legislature and therefore to the people. Mm, yeah, accountability is a big word here in this analysis. But you know, if if you were governor, it sounds to me like what you would do is you would take the list from the auditor, you would add additional special funds that weren't on that special, you know, uh, printout. You would find it would ask the, the auditor to find all the special funds one way or the other. And then you would you would take that, and for the most part, except when required, like the highway fund, um, you would terminate them and spill that money, all of that money, into the general fund, 
And then you would have another part of that bill would say, let's not do this again. Right? Isn't that what you would do as governor? No, that sounds like a great idea. Hmm. Would the legislature go along with that? I don't know. Well, it really depends on two levels. I mean, one is the governor himself has to pay some attention to this. And, and two is, um, you know, the leadership in both houses. Uh, they have to mm, see it the way we see it. They have to see the special fund thing as a, as a perversion. Um, and unfortunately, this is not a campaign issue. Um, that they run on or that the rank and file legislators run on. Um, so it, that leaves it, am I right? That leaves it in the hands of the media. So there's well, the, the, yeah, the media are, and the special interest groups and the special interest groups are going to say, we need the special fund. We need the dedicated funding. You know, we don't want, you know, the, the um, agencies to go through the trouble of going back to the legislature time and time again for what, right? So um, uh, they're going to argue, argue, argue. Uh, that we need this, we need this, we need this. You know, it's so funny. If you if you walk the halls starting in the middle of February, actually in the middle of December of any given year, and through the legislative session, it would be crowded. The halls are crowded. And the people who are there are seeking special consideration from the legislature. I mean, do you know a business or a, a nonprofit uh, accepting think tech, by the way, uh, that actually does not walk the halls, that does not come with their hat in their hand asking for money every single year. I mean, half the business community is there in the halls asking for money. Uh, so, Well, the foundation doesn't. I mean, my, my, my foundation doesn't. We, we, we don't accept government money. Yeah, well, we, we don't ask for government money. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, what I find interesting is, you know, you say, well, all those special uh, interest groups uh, want to preserve their stream of income from the state. And yet still um, we have all these people walking the halls, a lot of them are special interest groups, some bigger, some smaller. And they they absolutely require state funding to continue in existence, which is really too bad. That's a, that's a whole scenario which doesn't seem appropriate. And so when, when you say that they're there asking or they're there lobbying for continuation of special funds, well, my goodness gracious, there are so many of them, there's so much money involved, not only in special funds, but in, you know, in annual funds. That really, it's, it's got to be cleaned up. And some of them, you know, I, I don't want to tell you anything you don't know, some of them um, get the money from the legislature because of twist. And I am not going to define twist. Is it arm twisting? I'm not going to define it. Okay. Well, I think, I think we all know what you mean. Yeah. So, um, okay. Let's continue to follow this, Tom, because I, I think this is an ongoing problem. I don't think the media covers it enough. I don't think the state auditor, you know, had had the respect he should have had uh, in making that that list, that report. I don't think the legislature was listening then or now, and it really depends on the leadership. That is, the governor and, and the two leaders in the, both houses to actually do something about this. And you can say this is low on the list of priorities. We have so many other distraction points that we have to handle. Um, but after a while, you really have to get to it, don't you? Well, I mean, uh, a lot of our distraction points, as you call them, uh, need money. And to figure out uh, whether to appropriately fund them or how much to appropriately fund them, you got to know how much money you have. And we don't. And we don't. Purely and simply. Well, Tom, <clears throat> talking to you always makes me happy. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I'm going to take a break now and, and soak my head for a little while thinking about this problem, which doesn't go away. Yeah, Thank you. your, your, your crying towel is right there. Thank you, Tom. Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, helping us understand what is going around the, the uh, square building and what is going all around us as taxpayers. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on the show, Jay.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.